Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to The Debrief, a weekly Q&A show with, from Sandals Church and Pastor Matt Brown with real answers to tough questions about the Bible. I'm Justin Party hanging out here with my friends. Stephanie Schaefer. What's That's up, right. guys? And we are here with the most famous pastor in America, big time Pastor Matt Brown. I was going to say, that guy is not here. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but the PMB is. You know what I actually like that my kids call me PMB now? Oh, yeah, I always wanted a nickname. I never knew it would be initials. Um, Mine's, I got the PRD going on. Yeah, my kids I, I don't call you PRD that. forever. They yeah, don't call they, you PRD. No, nah, not my children. Some people do, and I love it. Yeah, I love it. You had a you had a pretty awesome weekend. You mm-hmm. were here with us at Saddle Shirt Sandals at Saddle at Saddle Saddle Sandals Church. Sandals. Whoa, back. careful there. That may be prophetic. <laughs> yeah, that's um, <laughs> yeah. So kicked off back to school. Yeah. And then so you got to go to special back. shout out to all of our people who answered the email. Uh, I got to preach live uh, to a couple hundred people at Sandals Church on Thursday, and that's just really really important because. You know, part of preaching is actually preaching to people. There's something dynamic that happens between the preacher and the people, and you need that. And so, um, really, really was thankful to those people who came out on Thursday and let me preach that sermon about listening. Uh, that's something that I've really, really had to struggle with. We're going to talk about today. And then this weekend, I got the opportunity to preach at, I think it's the third biggest church in the United States, Saddleback mm-hmm. Church. So, to put that in perspective, they have more people lost in the parking lot than we have at <laughs> Sandals Church. And Sandals Church, I think we're like the 70th largest church in the something, United States. So, like that. to put that, I mean, that's right. We're, we're one of the biggest, we're in mm-hmm. the top 1%, and they are three or four times bigger than us. So, uh, it was a great opportunity. Pastor Rick Warren uh, has changed the world with his book, Purpose Driven Life. I actually got to sit in the office where he wrote that book. So oh, cool. if you follow me on Instagram, Tammy and I are sitting in the, he has a cool massage chair, which hint, hint, super hint, casual. I wonder if that was a massaging chair. That's yeah, cool. someone should have that in their office here at Sound Church, but it's awesome. And uh, we had a great time and man, it, it was really, really cool. He has his own private patio where he can go out and relax. And uh, the whole Saddleback uh, family was great to us. It was a lot of fun. There were some Sandals people that were out there. We had some debrief listeners hey. that came. Excellent. I don't know how they figured out that I was out there, but they did. And the, the debrief was in the house. They were screaming yeah, yeah. Uh, when they introduced me. So that was really, really cool. A lot of fun and uh, just really had a great experience um, uh, preaching uh, at two Saddleback Church and all their campuses. I, so we have what? We have five campuses going on six. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think they have 15. Wow. It's wild. Yeah. So it's really, really crazy. So Love you, Saddleback Church, but uh, Sandals, it's good to be home this weekend. I will be with you guys. I'm super excited as we look at Proverbs and how to become wise. You guys, speaking of wisdom, I just had a great idea, and that is what if we do a debrief show live from three massage chairs? Mm. I'm down. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. but that would be weird when I'm like, uh, that would be weird. <laughs> that's... Or well, that, that be, little like pattering thing, oh, and then yeah, you're like, yeah, voice yeah. The people cat. would just assume that's the sound of you tapping into the deepest realms of wisdom, yeah, uh, and rec- spiritual recollection that you can yeah. find. Ooh, yeah, it's See, in, that's uh, weird. Uh, Ephesians. Yeah. All right. Well, either way, either, either, either way, would that may be coming towards you. All right. Coming <laughs> towards you. That's weird. Well, man, your your verbal skills are on point. Coming today. out in the, f- the it, it maybe someday soon in the future. <laughs> okay. All right, let's just jump into some business here Perfect. on the show. Here on The Debrief, we're going back to school this fall with Sandals Church. And ding, so we are doing ding, a series of how-to episodes here on the show. So if you've been wondering how to share your faith, how to navigate conflict, or how to be a better parent, spouse, friend, or small group member, we want to hear your questions on that. We're going to be going through a bunch of how-to episodes for the next few weeks. So send those to us. You can do that at debrief.show. We've got a form there that's super easy to fill out. We also added an option where if you want to send in a video question, we will get it here on the show. There's instructions on the form at debrief.show of how to do that. Do it. Do we it. would love to see some friendly faces here. You could also send us a message on Facebook. We would love to get your questions in on any of those topics. That's right. Today's show is going to be about how to be wise, how That's to right. how to have wisdom. How mm. to be wise. How to be wise. There yeah. it is. But of course, sp- w- w- some of the th- one of the things that is just a common char- characteristic of wise people is their uh, passion for leaving five-star reviews about this show and giving excellent feedback. We got a another five-star review in the iTunes store from Jedi Stacy. Whoa. Seriously, okay. what a mm. great name. Pastor Matt has an excellent grasp of the truth and meaning of scripture. He's also willing to admit the things he doesn't know and the things that are unknowable to us in this life. And he encourages us to accept by faith. Thank you for providing a place where people can ask their honest questions about mm. the Bible. You're welcome, Jedi. Exactly. From one Jedi to another, <laughs> exactly. you're welcome. And thank you for that uh, well-earned five-star review. Well-earned? Uh, can I say that? I don't know. You can. Thanks I for the five-star review. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's matter earned it. We're just here to exactly. along for the ride. So. Well, before we get into debrief, you know we want to dig deeper into some of the stuff that we talk about here on the show. So it's time to for you to answer some questions about answers to questions. It's follow-up. 
That's, Whoa. That's right. Exactly. So Pastor Matt, you've talked a lot lately about the importance of having community, being in community, being in a small group here at Sandals Church. Thalia sent in this question and asked, my community group disbanded about two months ago after some tension and growing pains. Most members had big life shifts, so I understand the changing needs of each person, but I haven't been able to find a group since. I've reached out to people personally and through the website, but have had no luck in finding my place. I know community is extremely important and I feel it's absent strongly in my life. Should I be starting my own group or should I continue to search for one to join? Yeah, it sounds like that you need to start your own group, especially with your passions and your experience. I think you would make a great group leader. So Mm -hmm. I would encourage you to stop by uh, the group's, um, I want to say tent, it's not a tent, the group's station or whatever, whatever campus that you go to and let them know, hey, I'm interested in being a group leader, go in, get some training, figure that out, and then start a group. Because what we want more than anything is people who are passionate about groups and passionate about people. Those are the two most important things. Um, because again, you know, uh, those of you who follow me on um, Twitter, I posted uh, an article this week that was really, really fabulous. It's terrifying, but it's fabulous. It's written by a psychologist that talks about the damage that cell phones, that our smartphones are doing to community and, mm-hmm. and real relationships and actually just wrecking this current kid generation that doesn't even leave their own bedroom, but is constantly on their smartphone in false relationship with everybody. Mm. Um, It just shows that God did not design us to be alone. We need to be in real community with people who really know us. And here's the thing is technology is making relationships more and more difficult. Actual, you know, having real interaction is becoming extraordinarily terrifying. But the thing is, is we want a real relationship with God. We don't want a technological relationship with God. So Mm -hmm. in order to grow in that, we have to have real relationship with people. And so we need to press into that. If you're able, I mean, some of us, you know, I know some of our listeners listen from far, far away and there's not, uh, there's not an opportunity yet for community for you. And, you know, don't send in a question about that. We're working on that. Mm -hmm. But if there is an opportunity for community, no Christian in the Bible would ever intentionally isolate themselves. Sometimes they had to be isolated if they were in prison or they were traveling or whatever else there. So there are, uh, situations where that's possible, but I'm just so encouraged that you value community in that way. I'm sorry that difficult things happen and just understand human beings are sinners, just like married Christians struggle, married or a Christian family struggle, Christian small groups will struggle. Don't be surprised by it. Don't be shocked by it. All that does is reveal the level of learning that we need to grow in, in terms of loving Christ. It's really, really hard to be in community. Community exposes what you need to work on. It's real easy to, uh, you know, deceive yourself um, and say, you know, I, I've got it all together. Community shows, you know, where you're at. I mean, who you really are comes out when people are around, man, mm-hmm. and, and and you feel a little comfortable to be real. So um, it's really, really, you know, it's it's sad on the one hand, but hey, that's why Jesus Christ died because relationally we're a little sad. Mm-hmm. And so for those of you um, who haven't yet heard about our, our growth tracks that are coming up or our sandals workshops, I need to call it the right thing. You got to take that because you got to understand what Christianity is all about. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people don't work at relationships because they don't understand that Christianity is a relational movement. So thank you so much for your question. And I encourage you to be a leader. That's great. All right, well, let's start debriefing this sermon. We're talking about how to be wise. And as we kicked off back to school, you talked about really where a lot of that begins as we learn to listen. And one of the community group questions, which I'm going to pull up from the Sandals Church app, or it's on the bottom of your sermon notes if which you were you can here download at the weekend. in the app store on iTunes. Yeah, that's right. Sandals Church app. One of the community group questions says, how would you rate your listening skills? Pastor Matt, how would you rate your listening skills, buddy? I would say really, really bad initially. Uh, and here's the tragedy is I thought I was a really, really good listener. And, and a lot of people are, you know, people always tell me this. Well, I've had lots of training in listening. Well, yeah, well, I took five years of Spanish. <laughs> that doesn't mean <laughs> I'm good at it, right? Just because you've had training doesn't mean you're good at something. And so, again, so the first thing you have to do, point number one, is you have to value listening. And we live in a culture that does not value listening. It values speaking, which is the absolute opposite of what the Bible says. The Bible says, be quick to listen and slow to speak. It's why God gave you two ears and one mouth. Mm. And so you gotta slow down and you gotta listen. But if you don't value, and, and people just don't, they just don't value listening. And so, you know, when we watch Fox News or CNN and we watch these people going back and forth, it's just like, can you guys just sit down and actually yeah. listen? Um, because, you know, I don't think Democrats want to destroy the country or Republicans. I think they, they what they want is what they think is best. Sit down, talk, and listen to each other, and maybe we can move forward. We might, we might not agree, but that's okay. You got to move forward, and you got to listen and try to give people the benefit of the doubt. And so I just learned at 40 
that I was not a good listener. Mm -hmm. What I heard is what I wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. And uh, that actually really came about uh, in a relationship with a staff member uh, that I was really, really close to. And, you know, they would try to uh, initiate some conversations. And I realized through that process when ultimately they left the church that I wasn't listening. Um, I also learned that when we uh, took in my niece and she came to live with us and she was very, very clear about some things that she felt and I, I didn't listen. Mm-hmm. And so God taught me three things I wanna do better for the next 40 years of my life. I wanna, I wanna love people more, I wanna listen better, and I wanna be a better leader. Mm-hmm. And I really feel like the third one only occurs when I love. And then ultimately, I think if you truly love someone, you're going to listen right. mm-hmm. to them. Um, and we've got to do that. So great question. Good stuff. Yeah. All right. So let's dive into some questions that we have gotten here. Um, since your sermon, we actually have a ton that have come in from your message. This first one comes from Anonymous, who said, in your sermon on learning to listen this past weekend, you said that we can learn wisdom from the stupidest of people. What would you say about wisdom that is coming from someone that's not leading us toward Christ? Is it still wisdom that we should learn from? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I thought I said this in the message that a broken clock is right twice a day. Mm-hmm. So part Part of becoming wise is to learn when wisdom is speaking. So Mm -hmm. if someone's saying nonsense, don't listen. But if someone who is usually full of nonsense happens to say something wise, write it down, listen, take it to heart. So there's this great story in the Bible uh, about Balaam and his donkey. And so literally God uses his donkey to speak truth to him. So if God can use an ass to speak to somebody, he can use anybody. Right. And, um, you know, I, I think it's a hilarious story about what God can do to speak truth to us. You know, God can speak to you through a secular song. God can speak to you through, um, he could speak to you through an atheist, right? Mm-hmm. All wisdom, true wisdom comes from God. And so, um, but that doesn't mean people who deny God can't attain some of that wisdom. It just means they don't know it all. So you can be wise and still be going to hell. That's just the reality. Mm-hmm. You just missed salvation. You, you missed Jesus. I mean, a lot of the people who rejected Jesus had wisdom in all kinds of areas, but their pride didn't allow them to recognize Jesus for who he was. So um, I think, yes, we, we can learn from stupid people or, or absolutely, man. And again, I think it comes from an attitude of humility. You have to be a humble person and just ask yourself, okay, what is God trying to teach me? Sometimes God is trying to teach you wisdom through a stupid action of someone else. Mm. And that's just the reality. They don't have to be doing something wise. They can be doing something extraordinarily dumb and that teaches you wisdom. Mm. Oh, wow, I, I shouldn't do that. Do that. Yeah. yeah, so wisdom can be derived from the opposite of what someone is doing. And so we all need to be students to say, okay, how can I learn? What can I do? And so... Um, uh, Pastor Tom Holiday, who's one of the executive pastors at Saddleback Church, he gave me a huge compliment this weekend. He came up to me and he said, you know what my dad said about you years ago? So, uh, or his father-in-law, his father-in-law is no longer with us. He's up in heaven with the Lord. He said, Matt Brown learns from his mistakes mm-hmm. and he listens to people. So I thought that was really, really great is that, you know, uh, this older gentleman recognized that, you know, Matt Brown's going to learn, he's going to listen And I've made many, many mistakes. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with making a mistake. What's stupid is making that same mistake over and over Mm -hmm. and over again, and then asking God what the problem is. And that's what what the fool does. The fool takes no responsibility for what they've done with their life. And you need to step back and say, okay, if I'm on my third marriage, this is not a God problem. Mm -hmm. This is a me problem. Mm -hmm. If I've had conflicts with all my children, if all my children are turning out to be disasters. Who's been the prime? I mean, I've got to look at myself. I've got to be willing to look at my part in the process. I've got to take responsibility for me and say, what do I need to change? What do I need to do different? Because the fool never changes. The fool just keeps bashing their head over and over again, making the same mistakes over and over again. The wise person listens and says, okay, wisdom is calling out. She calls from the streets. You need to listen to her. The problem is she's not the only voice. Stupidity also calls out, <laughs> not just from the streets, but from, you know, some, in some of us, our own homes, our own relationships, our own fr- friendship networks on social media. Stupidity is calling out too. So we've got to learn to listen. So absolutely, um, lost people, people who uh, reject. And here's one of the things that I think wows non-Christians is I'll listen to them. And, you know, if they're saying something stupid, I just kind of listen. And if every now and then they land on something wise, I go, yeah, that's, I agree with that. And they're always shocked with that. Mm-hmm. And so um, actually what it causes them to do is to value me. I mean, nothing nothing makes people appreciate 
uh, you more than if you listen. And so, um, so true. My family's not a great listening family. Um, we're just, we're just not. So I've had to work really, really hard at listening. Um, because I've seen, I've seen the catastrophic mistakes that occur and listening is not just listening to words. It's looking at facial cues. Mm -hmm. It's watching body language. It's, it's learning to read the person in front of you. And that's key. I think you and I've had conversations about this Mm -hmm. in the past. Yeah. Because, um, you know, and guys, you know, if you're married, don't just listen to the words that are coming out of your wife's mouth. Look at her face, look at her body. What is happening as you're speaking? Um, and the same thing is um, with your kids. I have one kid that's so easy to read. I mean, her whole body changes when she's not agreeing or hmm. doesn't like what's being said. And, you know. Makes it easy. Yeah, and I'll say, wow, you don't like what I said. And they'll, she'll say, that's not true. I was like, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your body. Okay, Jonathan says, why did you refer to wisdom as a her in your sermon? Because that's how she's referred to in the book of Proverbs. So mm-hmm. we're studying the book of Proverbs. And so we want to be clear with the text. Um, and so I just think it's, you know, wh- why do why do we call ships her? I mm-hmm. don't know. You know, I've never heard of a masculine ship. So um, that's just kind of what they do. And it's the whole idea of the book of Proverbs is a masculine dominated book with the exception of Proverbs 31. This is men handing men wisdom and so again, so what did Proverbs, I think it was 1, 3 say, do not uh, rebuke the correction of your father. Do not forsake the instruction of your mother. And so I think it's important to know that not all wisdom is masculine. I think there's a lot of wisdom that comes from women, that comes from femini- femininity. Is that the word? Femininity. Uh, yeah. There we go. And so I think, especially as men, we need to be very, very careful to not assume that all wisdom is masculine. I think a lot of male chauvinists that I've run into are not wise men. Mm There just aren't. And I had to learn a long time ago, I had to learn to listen to my wife. And um, I think that's important as men um, that we really, really learn to listen to wisdom that comes from women. So, um, you know, wisdom here, it's, you know, this is, um, it's, he's just using this as an example. There's not actually a female spirit that's speaking. He's just using a hyperbole to describe, a metaphor, there we go, to describe this, you know, just like when the Bible says God wants to wrap us in his feathers. Okay. He's not a bird. He's talking about how like a mother hen brings in her chicks. And so that's what God wants to do. So he's using everyday real life illustrations to describe some eternal principles. And so that's what he's doing here. So I used it as a woman because Proverbs uses wisdom as a, a woman. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's important to be clear to the text or truthful to the text. Yeah, totally. All right. So this next question comes from Becca and she says, I struggle with focusing my mind and find that it often wanders when I'm trying to listen to God or to other people. Pastor Matt, you've shared that you also struggle with paying attention. Do you have any suggestions of things that help you pay attention and listen better? Absolutely. And so for all my ADD people, um, you've got, you've got to attack your disability. ADD is a disability. It is. It, it challenges you. It will prevent you from learning, growing, listening, relating, Uh, it's a really, really destructive thing in your life. And I've had to go at it like full force. I actually went to a psychologist and did some training, um, did some mind mapping and really, really focused on learning to focus because it was just so chronically difficult for me in my life. It's why I struggled in school as a kid. um, And I've learned some things that I have to do when I need to study and when I need to listen. And again, you can do more than you think you can do. Everything is difficult until you master it. And so just like working out or exercising. Um, and what I've learned is anything new is hard. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter what it is. So like I, I work out all the time, but if I'm doing something that I haven't been doing, it's really, really hard for me. It's mm-hmm. really, really difficult for me. So something new is hard. So just make sure that you, you attack that, you work on that. You know, you can get on the, uh, on the internet. You can look at, um, you know, there are psychologists that will help you with this specifically. Um, you know, some of the train, one of the places in town is called the Drake Institute and they help you with just focusing and learning to focus. And I've had some friends who have ADD and I've sent them there and they quit after the first session. And I think it's really, really tragic because they're gifted people and they refused to do hard things. And listen to me, if you want to be wise, you have to be willing to do hard things. And it doesn't matter, right? If you're trying to lose weight, trying to lose weight's hard. If you're trying to learn the Bible, learning the Bible's hard. If you're trying to stay married, stay married. You've mm-hmm. got to learn to do hard things. And, um, 
you know, just because we have a disability doesn't mean that God doesn't want us to try to overcome it. So we have to, and I, and I believe it's the struggle that actually makes you strong. That That's what makes you strong. And so my heart goes out to you. I understand how difficult it is, but just know this, that you're gonna miss out on a good portion of life if you don't at least try to tackle your attention deficit mm-hmm. disorder, you, you, you know? And uh, some of us will be more victorious than others. Some of us will work at it. And what I've noticed is, man, um, there are some days where I'm better and there are some days where I'm worse. And uh, I mean, it, it broke my heart to hear my kids say, Dad, are are you really listening? Or are you just saying yes? Like when they used to say that, it just mm. broke my heart. And everybody makes fun of me now, right? Because I stare into people's oh, yes. souls. Mm-hmm. But that's one of the techniques that I've learned is if I'm not looking at you, I'm not listening to you. Mm-hmm. And totally. that's just me. Yeah. So if my wife wants me to listen to her, the TV has to be off. If I'm in the car, I cannot listen to the radio and my kids. Mm-hmm. I cannot listen to music and my kids. I can do one or the other. And so that's hard for my kids sometimes. But if I if they want me to listen to what they're saying, Everything has to be, I literally cannot do both. And so that's really, really challenging for me. I need to focus. And so now one of the things I do when I'm reading, uh, and this is just a a technique that I learned, it works for me, is I put headphones on with noise cancellation and I listen to music without lyrics. Mm -hmm. There can be no lyrics. So just just a low undertone music distraction kind of calms my mind. It can't be any music that I know. It just has to be something. So I'll, I listen to a lot of soundtracks mm-hmm. from movies. And so that's what I listen to, just things like that. And and I can't also can't like it too much because if I like it too much, <laughs> I start paying t- attention to that. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, I really like the soundtrack from Last Mohican, but it's not really effective for me because I'm like- <laughs> So he's getting pumped. the soundtrack. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Because yeah. I want to be the Last Mohican. Yeah. It's awesome. And I would say too, so I'm not, I wouldn't say I struggle with ADD, but I am a person who will struggle to pay attention. My mind can wander when I'm listening. And I've learned as we've been doing some of our self-discovery training, that one of the key things about my personality is that I will kind of detach or disconnect from things to kind of avoid being checked into something, trying to avoid pain or whatever that may be. And so some of how I've had to work on learning to listen better is just learning to notice when I'm just checking out and when I'm just not paying attention. So some of it may be if you don't struggle with ADD and that's not necessarily a thing, it could be like you need to check in on why you tend to detach from what's going on around you. That may be a more effective thing for people, some people to pursue who don't struggle with ADD. Yeah, and right. And also just know some of the simple things is if it's an important thing, you need to be rested Mm -hmm. and you need to be ready. So people say, well, I don't get anything out of the Bible. Well, read the Bible when you're rested and ready. Mm -hmm. Come to church when you're rested and ready. And so that's one of the reasons why I think God in the Old Testament talks about the Sabbath. So when when do we devote time to God? When we're rested and we're ready. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really, really important. But if I'm sitting in church thinking about all the things that I got to get done that day, I'm not rested and I'm not ready. And so um, it's just, that's just true. We're, we're better listeners when we're rested and we live in a rushed society, not a rested society. And that's, Mm -hmm. That's that's our sin. That's part of walking away from who God is. Is we feel like we always got to be doing something. And man, what we're supposed to do one day a week is rest and be ready for what God has to say. And man, if you violate that, good luck with that because God didn't design you to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. neglect to neglect Him and to neglect rest. So you know that's one of the reasons I love attending our Saturday night services. Honestly, personally for me, even even though like I might be doing stuff throughout the day, whether it's some kid's birthday party or a project in the backyard. I usually, because what I end up doing on Saturdays is so totally different than what I do the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. I, I always feel somewhat rested when I show up, but I'm, it's, I don't know, it's just a good time for me. I'm alert. Mm-hmm. And even if I'm a little bit tired, I'm like more, I'm like kind of receptive. I'm, it's not so late that, or too early that I'm like, eh. anyways, I love going to church on, on Saturdays for that yeah. very reason. Well, and I love our Saturday night crowd because... We can't fit you on Sundays. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Truth. Win-win. All right. So Elena says, I know I'm supposed to listen to criticism in order to grow, but I find myself mulling over it constantly when I get the tiniest bit of negative feedback. It's exhausting and feels unhealthy. What are healthy ways to deal with while I'm talking, to deal with taking it in while I'm trying to grow in wisdom? Right. So I think there's an, an, an important uh, element here. So the devil is going to criticize you. The Holy Spirit is going to criticize something you do. Mm. Hmm. So that's, that's, that's completely different. So demonic criticism is you're no good. You're not valuable. Godly criticism is I've designed you to do better and be better. So God, right. So, so we have to understand that. So the devil is going to demean you. God is going to challenge you. Those are two different things. And so you have to understand that. So, you know, I got some negative feedback on Twitter this week and, and, and one of them was literally this guy is I'm trying to find that church is important when you don't even show 
because I was on video. Well, okay, but I can't be in two places at once. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I wanted to launch, you know, our back to school series. I think that's important that I do that. And so it worked. And so, you know, okay, does he have a point? Yeah, but I can't be in two places at once. So I just, whatever, I I listened to what he had to say and then moved on. Um, I got some really, really ugly feedback a couple of weeks ago about a message that I preached and, and it was really, really off. And so I shared it with a couple of people, said, what do you think? And, you know, some of our staff was just like, this guy, this is nuts. This mm. is, and, and, and so you just go, okay, you move mm. on. But it got to me. And I think also, again, when I'm rested, I handle criticism better. Mm. When I'm constantly running and I'm running on empty, I just don't. And so um, this is, you know, in your marriage, in your relationships, you need, you need to say, okay, let's have some real rest so we can talk about some things that need to be changed. But when we're irritable, when we're upset, when we're, we're burned out, we haven't slept well, those are not the times, you know, to talk about it. We, we, we've got to do that. So I, I agree, criticism is tough, but you have to ask yourself, you know, do you want, do you want to be a better person or do you want to be a sheltered person? Um, we, you need to be better and, and I want you to be better. And uh, I think that's really, really important. And, and not all criticism is bad. It's just not. Yeah. And so I just try to assume this, that can, is there some, this is what I believe wisdom says. Is there something I can learn? Yeah, I can, I can always learn. And so I just try to listen to what somebody's saying. And, um, you know, I, I think one of the big challenges my wife has is when we fight is like, we'll be like five minutes into it. And I'll just go, you're totally right. Which is, is really lame when you're all ready to go 12 rounds. And, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, you, you just, it's just really, really hard. I mean, but I just, you know, I'm just trying to listen and, and I don't always listen well at first, but I just about, you know, five or six minutes in, I'm like, yep, that's wrong. Yep, I'm t- totally, you know, and I just, I just die to it. And she's just like, wait a minute. But mm-hmm. I thought we were going to go 12 more rounds. I'm like, no, <laughs> I, I'm, it's a TKO round three. So um, I just tried to listen to somebody's perspective. And what I've learned is, you know, the more defensive I am, it usually means the more correct they are. Mm-hmm. But if I'm not defensive, you know, it's just like, yeah, well, this is somebody's opinion. And, you know, you know, so you don't like church on video. You don't like church on the screen. I believe that if Jesus had our technology today, he would have done it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that's, that's just, that's just, I believe what, what he would have done. And so, because when he was here, he was limited to one time, one place, because he was in one body. That's, that's just the reality. Now he could move around in funky ways after the resurrection. That's pretty cool. But <laughs> he, he was limited to, you know, whatever he was, 5'10", you know, 165. I don't know what, what his actual weight was, but that's where he was. <laughs> Pretty good guess. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll go with it. Jesus. We'll go with it. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's what I would say is, is, and again, this is why community, real community. So most community is always going to tell you that criticism is always wrong. Mm-hmm. Christ-centered community is going to say, well, let's, let's think about this. Mm-hmm. And they're going to they're gonna force you to do that. So every small group, Help people to know when you enter into a conversation about criticism, help them to know they're loved, that you value them and that they have meaning. And then let's look at this criticism because it doesn't do anybody any favors when you automatically dismiss everything that is negative. So when somebody in your community group is complaining about work because the boss is saying they're not doing some things, chances are they might not be doing some things. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. listen, I can't tell you how many people, you know, at Sandals, we have over a hundred people that work for me. And people are always upset, you know, when it doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, mm-hmm. you know, we're not here to ruin your life. We're here, we're here to love you and, and, and let you be, be used by God. But I can't tell you how many times we've had conversation after conversation and they don't listen. Mm-hmm. Listen to negative feedback. Listen to criticism. And uh, man, that has helped me a, a, a lot. Um, that's one of the reasons I stare people in the face because people used to say, when I talk to you, pastor, I don't feel like you're listening. Mm-hmm. Well, I wasn't. And I see a lot of pastors that do that. They don't listen. Mm. Mm. So, so just encourage encourage friends that love you enough to sit in criticism with you to decipher whether or not it's real or not. Yeah. And mm. um, you know, I, I just think if people aren't willing to wade in the waters of negativity with you, they don't really love you. Uh, one of my best friends, man, uh, he is just so great at helping me evaluate criticism. I know he loves me. I know he adores me, man. But. And he'll just blast me sometimes. Mm. Now, of course you do that, Matt. I mean, he's real direct, you know? And <laughs> it's and I. that's actually the reason that I love him as a friend is because he is bluntly clear. And I just, I don't have a lot of time to dance around issues. I just need somebody to punch me in the face with it and and uh, let me know. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. 
That's great. You know, on the other side of this question, there's the, the a campus pastor at North Point Church in Atlanta. His name's Clay Scroggins. I heard him on a podcast last week because he's got this that book. That's like the most Southern name I've ever heard. Clay Scroggins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. yeah he, he's got some book coming out. It says How to Lead When You're Not in Charge. But in this podcast last week that I heard him, he talked about learning to communicate um, either critical thinking or criticism. And he said, you, you know, just like really thinking through the difference on how are you communicating? Are you communicating um, you know, at the person or around about an idea or something along those lines. And I just thought that was really helpful for me to go, man, wh- make sure that I'm drawing a distinction. If, especially if I'm trying to communicate something to someone, mm-hmm. uh, maybe like I feel like I have see something in their life or yeah. access to some kind of wisdom. Yeah. I thought that was so really when, good. So when criticizing, don't attack the person, attack the action. Mm-hmm. So instead of me saying, Justin, you're a total moron. Right. Say, Justin, when you do this, it hurts my feelings. When you do this, I don't think it's like Christ. When you do this, I think it's whatever. But make sure that you're focusing on the action because a person can't change who they are until they change what they do. So you have to help them change what they do. And and there are some people that don't care. So uh, I wanna do a series um, maybe in the future, and I don't know what to call it, but I think I wanna call it how to be more positive in a critical culture or something like that mm-hmm. because everything I think one of the reasons we all kind of block it out is is our, our culture is just so critical. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and the problem with that is nobody's listening. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so we, we need to learn to listen. We need to learn to get better. And um, in order to do that, and again, it's why I think Jesus said, love your enemies, because sometimes they're the only person that's willing to be real with us. And so um, we've got to listen to that. And, um, and and some things, you know, that people are critical about, you know, you, you can't change. Well, people say, well, sandals is just big. Yeah. What am I going to do about that? Yeah. You know, and I always tell people, who do you want me to send away? Because I kind of feel like the Holy Spirit's telling me to send you away. (laughs) You know, know, it's it's always interesting, you know, when people have criticisms. Like when I first started Sandals Church, like, well, Matt Brown's young. What what can he know? Well, you can't change your age. Mm -hmm. What, What can you do about that? There's, I can't fast forward the clock on my age. I can only be as mature as I am and as old as I am. And so, um, there's just some things you, you just can't change, you know? Um, well, Matt Brown's too funny. Well, that's how God made me. So, yeah, I, tell, I, tell people, the I tell people, you have no idea what I didn't say. So I tell my <laughs> wife all the time. We like that you're funny. Thank you. And we also know what you didn't say. That's true. Yes. Which is really funny. Yeah. <laughs> all right, this question. Cold gold, volume <laughs> never happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so true. Okay, this one comes from Amanda. That's right. Amanda asks, how do you know if you lack wisdom or just need to better learn a subject or skill? I think, by the way, that... She's, you got some wisdom right there. Yeah, that was a, just the ability, that to, question, the ability to discern that. Good, good on you, Amanda. Yeah. She says, my husband and I over the years have become better stewards with our money, but still have seasons or months of hardship. Does this mean we lack wisdom? Yes. Okay. Yes, everyone lacks wisdom. Mm. Everyone. You're going to lack, man, you, you're, you're going to be 100 years old and lack wisdom. Um, we will not be perfect until God makes us perfect on the other side. And so that's the reality is, you know, this... This thing called life is a lifelong project. And the second you stop learning is the st- second stop God stops using you. So we all lack wisdom. I lack wisdom. Um, I'm constantly trying to learn. Oh, I'm not making that mistake again. Oh, I'm not doing that. Um, and a part of that is, you know, really, really l- learning to listen. So the second part of her question was what? Differentiating between wisdom and a skill? That's right. How do you know if you lack wisdom or you just need to better learn a skill? Okay, so in their so case, it's their money. Here's the tricky thing. So in Hebrew, the word for wisdom actually is the word for skill. Interesting. Yeah, it's the same word because wisdom is a skill. It's something that's learned, right? So skills that you have are things that you've learned. Giftedness is something that you're just born with. A skill is something that's acquired. Wisdom is acquired. You're not born wise. We're all born stupid, <laughs> right? You've got to learn to be wise. And if you're one of our young listeners... Listen, you're not wise. Mm-hmm. You're naive. You don't know. So I, you know, I was having this conversation with one of my daughters. That's um, she's very, very wise for her age, but she's still naive, and she doesn't know. She doesn't know. And you know, um, man, you know, we we live in, we live in this culture where you know everybody wants to say men and women are equal in every way. And listen to me, y- yes and no. Mm-hmm. You know. When you're, when you're a 19-year-old girl, there are differences when you travel from being a 19-year-old man. I'm sorry, there are. Mm-hmm. And if you don't recognize that, you're naive. Mm. You are naive. And so 
we, we have to, we have to make sure that we listen to just like the proverb is speaking to a young ignorant son. If you're a woman, you also have to understand, okay, there are some things that I have to navigate differently. I have to be more cautious. I have to be more careful. I have to be more watchful because bad things happen to women when they assume they're just like everybody else. And so things happen. And, and I, you know, my heart is, I don't want anything ever to happen to my girl. I don't want to treat them as, you know, second-class citizens. I don't believe that. I believe that they're unique. And, and not only are we not identical as men and women, we're not even identical as men or as women. Mm-hmm. We have differences. We have uniquenesses and we're able to do different things. And part of wisdom is understanding your skills, understanding where you should go and not go. And um, so I want my daughter to live life, experience life and be alive <laughs> mm-hmm. and not be wounded and not have experiences that don't destroy her forever because mm-hmm. man, some, some things you don't get back, mm-hmm. right? Once things happen. And uh, part of the naivete of my kids is they've been raised around good people who love them. Mm-hmm. That's not everyone. Mm-hmm. Not everyone in the world is that way. So the advantage of being raised in a harsh environment is, you know, people aren't good. Now that their challenge is trusting people. Yes. My kid's challenge is discerning people. Mm-hmm. You know, is this person safe or not safe? Because not every person is safe. Evil people don't raise their hands. It would be so helpful if all the evil people in the world had a shirt that said, I'm evil and I will hurt you if we're alone. Like that would be really helpful. Don't you guys agree? Yeah. Like we should start selling those shirts to evil people. Maybe we give them away for free. Yep. There yeah. you go. I am evil. I will hurt you if we're alone. And like when everybody you, those just Those eyes that you have after that are a little terrifying. Sorry. You think my eyes are terrifying anyways, so. It's because you're listening so deeply to it. I know. Yes. So. Um, Stephanie doesn't like being So, known. okay. So wisdom is a skill. So we constantly need to learn. And so when you from time to time have financial issues, you just learned. Mm-hmm. There was some naivete there. Simply paying your bills, paying your tithe. You know, we've got to learn. Uh, we, we have, what, what class do we teach here at Sales at Financial Peace? Finding, finding Financial Freedom and Financial Peace University. Yeah, so, There's a $10 one and a $120 yeah, one. Yeah, so, so take those. And we're actually going to talk about money in this series because Proverbs has a lot to say about spending your money because you have to learn to save for a rainy day and do those things. And we'll get into that. But man, things happen that you're not ready for and you need to be ready for those. Mm-hmm. And so- um, you know, I, I think most Americans think that they're doing good when they're simply paying their bills. Well, what happens if you lose your job? What, what happens if something right. catastrophic happens? And most Americans are two months away from bankruptcy, absolute bankruptcy. That's not a good place to be in. And so mm-hmm. we all need to learn to save a little more, you know, drive a car that's a little less nice, own a home that's a little smaller, or maybe don't own a home. We need to learn to do those things so that we can be wise. So just know this. Wisdom is a skill that constantly has to be learned. And if you think you've mastered wisdom, you lost it. Mm. You know? Mm. It's like people yeah, who think good. it's like mm-hmm. people who think, yeah, I'm humble now. <laughs> okay. I'm so humble. I am so humble. I got an award. Most humble person on earth. <laughs> hey, so for people that are interested in that whole oh, yes. topic, I'm pretty sure I think we have got finan- the financial classes are coming up really they soon are. at our campuses. That's right. So we'll throw links to how to sign up for those onto the show notes at debrief.show slash seventy four. We'll include some links. Um, and if you happen to miss this round because you're listening to this episode a little while later, that link will just be to an interest form so you, they can let you know when the next class is coming. So yep. Amanda, hu- sign up with your husband. It's good. Yeah. Pick up some Thank new you, skills. Amanda. Yeah, but, totally. But you're on to something. I mean, you mm-hmm. learned Hebrew and didn't even know it. That's right. <laughs> you know, I've always, p- p- part of this whole thing, I've always just keep finding myself getting more and more vulnerable. You know, there's like more people who know exactly how much money I make every single month who look in and say, you know, mm-hmm. I talk to people like, hey, how much should I be spending on, you know, at Target every, you know, like how do we build those things? And I've just found that mm-hmm. the sharing with other people, some of the, those details that were like, mm, has mm-hmm. been such a huge part of yeah. gaining wisdom uh, is letting other people get access to all the details. That yeah. And so get off through. Instagram and get real. So when everybody's out doing these shopping street sprees, and we all have this, you're like, how do they afford to go to Disneyland? Well, most people can't. I mean, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My, I, I make more money than both of you guys, okay? But I can't what? afford to go to Disneyland all the time, right? <laughs> yeah. That's a that's an expensive day mm-hmm. for us. And so, man, you know, when you see people and you're saying, how do they? They're probably not doing it wisely. Mm-hmm. And so just know that and just say, well, well I want to take that vacation or I want to have that RV or I want to go. And it's like, man, just because somebody, you know, is presenting a certain life. I mean, there are wealthy people in our church that are one paycheck away from being broke. Yeah, And it's like- you know, just because you're wealthy doesn't mean you're wise. You've got to learn 
to save money and be prepared. And, and, and as an America in general, and really the world, the world has really adopted America's kind of view on money, which is be in all kinds of debt and pretend it's not there. Um, you know, there's going to be a come to Jesus moment for America and there will be a come to Jesus moment for you guys at some point. So, mm-hmm. uh, and what I mean by that is come to Jesus means, um, you know, that's Christianese. <laughs> yeah. It means get real. It's the get real day. That's what it means. Okay. So you mentioned that wise people get both sides of the story before making a decision or judgment call. What are some good ways to go about getting the other side of the story when you're hearing someone share about either relational conflict or maybe even what's going on in the news? Yeah. Well, let's talk about relationships because I think that's where it happens. Mm -hmm. When you're only listening to one side, it's gossip. It's absolute gossip. So Mm -hmm. you've you've got to make a decision and, um, you know, a lot of people come up to me and they'll say this, I want to tell you something and I don't want you to do anything about it. I probably hear that. 10 times a week. Wow. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and the reason why is they know I'm going to do something about it. And I usually am. And so usually here's how the conversation says, okay, I'm not going to do something about it if you do. And you have this amount of time to go talk to that person. Otherwise, I'm going to do that. Um, because if I just sit there and listen to you complaining and I'm, I, I'm participating in gossip. So mm-hmm. I think it's okay to go seek counsel from time to time as long as you're going to act on it. Mm -hmm. But when you don't act on it, you're just gossiping about people. Go and do something about it. And, you know, people that are continually negative about people, I just don't want to hang out. I'm just like, okay, we're done. Mm -hmm. Because they just just want to vent. Uh, You're not a vent. You're a human being. So quit doing that, right? (laughs) Quit spewing (laughs) hatred and criticism and actually go and talk to the person. And if you don't, you're a coward, which is a sin. That's one of the things I, I want to do a series on virtues because, you know, we're so critical of, uh, past generations. And you say, well, they were racist. Yep, but they were also courageous. Mm-hmm. So our, our generation is less racist, praise God, that's a good thing, but we're not courageous. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we're just not. Our, we're a bunch of cowards. Oh my gosh, you said a hurtful word. It's just like, oh, we need to be more courageous. So um, in some ways as a society, we've gotten better. In other ways, we've gotten way worse. So learn to deal with how you feel and be real with people. So I would say, go and deal with it. Um, give me the question again. I feel like I went on a little Yeah, rant. another part was even just how do we do that with what's going on in the news? How do we think? Yeah, how do we ha- pursue the other side okay, of the I, I, I have two websites I look at every day, which is almost comical, Fox News and CNN.com. It's almost like I live in two different countries. It is the most bizarre <laughs> thing ever. And at, at this point, I just think it, it's just clear one side's going to be overly defensive of Donald Trump and the other side is going to be overly critical and unfair. And that's just, that's unfortunately, that's where we are right now. Um, I think America's better, um, you know, when we when we have a Republican in the Oval Office because I think the press does their job. I think Donald Trump should be criticized. I think, I, right? Nobody's perfect. He's going to make mistakes. The problem is, is when you're overly critical, a lot of times we miss we miss some things. Like so, if it's if it's a four alarm fire every day, well, it's the story of the boy boy who cried wolf. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The problem with that of with crying wolf every single day and losing your mind every single day. You know, just say you hate Donald Trump. That's fine. In in a couple of years, you get to rectify that situation. Go vote, mm-hmm. get a candidate. You know, um, not name Hillary Clinton, and you might have a good job. You might have a shot. So, but on the other side, you know, uh, Republicans that are overly defensive and protective, and look, Donald Trump's a rough guy, man. He's got some rough edges, and you know, I wish he would have got real about some issues a long time ago. That mm-hmm. that's just the truth. He's got a tough personality, man. He's New York. New York's tough, man. They it just is. Uh, it's different from the rest of the country, and, and he survived there. So. With that, man, on a lot of things, I've just kind of thrown up my hands. I'm just like, man, I, I, I it to me, it's just, it's a cesspool of negativity. It's just ugly, and and I've just I've I've pulled back more politically in this season than I have in any other time in my life because yeah, I mm-hmm. because I have my own life, I have my own church, I have my own problems, and so um, I think getting getting both sides is exhausting, and I feel like everything's tainted either on the left or the right. It's just, it's all really tainted. Mm -hmm. And um, my prayer, excuse me, for America is that we can get back to a time when there's news and there's opinion. And those used to be two different sections. Mm -hmm. Now it's all opinion. And that's just, it's just absolutely uh, tragic, you know, because this country does have a real healthcare problem, whether you're for Obamacare or not, they got to fix it because it's all going away. And and that's a problem. And that affects all of us. Like we all need to go to the doctor. So those are real issues. So, Man, um, but but you know, back to the small group question. Look at how hard it is for us as Christians to to coexist together yeah. in community group. It's hard. It's hard for me to coexist with my wife, with my kids. Man, it interacting with human beings is difficult. Why? Because it 
raises the reality that we're sinners. Like everybody wants to blame God for all the problems, <laughs> man. 95% of the world's issues are human. Mm-hmm. It's just human. Mm-hmm. What, what have we done? You know, and even diseases, you say, well, why was that kid born with that? Well, what chemical did we put in the water that may have caused that? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't even know how much, it'll be interesting when God comes, how much ca- will we be able to figure out and understand that was God or was just us? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What we did, right? Yeah, he does so, a root cause So in analysis. Genesis chapter three, he says, if you eat of the tree of good and evil, you will die. Well, who's the first person that dies? Their son? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who did that? Mm-hmm. They did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, the, so the first result of death doesn't even have to do with God. It has to do with idiot kids who can't get along. So I saw somebody, I saw somebody on Twitter <clears throat> tweet last week that said, I'm willing to bet when Cain killed Abel, they were on summer break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, so good. Um, all right, Pastor Matt, last question. What are some resources that you would recommend, besides the Bible, of course, for practicing being more wise? Yeah, the debrief podcast. Yeah, debrief podcast. Anything, man. Um, I, you know, I, I, anytime I find somebody that's wise, uh, man, I try to listen to. Mm-hmm. Um, I could actually come up with a list next week of some people that I listen to. Oh, I try great. to listen to people that are not Christian. Mm-hmm. So I, I try to get outside of my Christian bubble. I try to listen to people who have different points of view. Um, uh, there's a couple of Jewish guys that I'll, I'll bring back next week that I like to listen to. Michael Medved is one. Um, I'm trying to think of, uh, what's his name? I can't think of his name. I listen to him every day. He wrote the book. Dennis Prager? Dennis Prager. Okay. Um, you know, uh, the re- problem is, happiness is a real problem. He wrote mm-hmm. that book. Another Jewish guy. Um, Jewish people tend to be brilliant. So mm. I don't know why that is, but other than they're blessed by God. But So I listen to a bunch of those guys. Um, I, I, try, I try to listen to people who um, have points of view that differ from mine because mm-hmm. I need to see things from from different angles and um, different perspectives. And I think that that's good. And again, I, you know, I can learn wisdom from a Buddhist monk. I can learn wisdom from, uh, you know, an Islamic uh, imam. Mm-hmm. I can't, I can't learn salvation from them, right? <laughs> but um, I can learn some wisdom and there's mm-hmm. some things that they've discovered and some practices and, and, and some truths that I can look at in my own life. Um, and I think that that's really, really good. But again, you said besides the Bible, mm-hmm. look, the Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Yep. So, so for me to answer that question without saying, you know, um, so both Michael Medved and uh, Dennis Prager both teach the Torah. They both do. So mm-hmm. they're wise. Yeah. I mean, they, they are students of not not the Christian Bible, but the Hebrew Scriptures. And both of them have a great appreciation for Christianity. A great appreciation. Uh, they're not followers of Jesus, but they do admire Him. And mm-hmm. I think that that's important and great. And so. Um, um, you know, one of the reasons I like Dennis Prager is he talks a lot about the differences in religions and what you can learn. And he has a great appreciation for religion as a whole. And like one of the things he says, if your religion doesn't make you a better person, what good is it? Mm-hmm. And I think, man, I think that's truth in that. And that's some Christians need to look at that. Like if sure. if your relationship with Jesus is not making you better, what is it? Mm. What is it? Right? When Jesus says the most important command is to love God, love your neighbor as yourself. And you're not doing that. Like, I mean, you know, it's it's just like this. If if you're on a diet and haven't lost a pound, what's the point? What's the point? If you if you're not actually making progress with what you're trying, I'm not saying it's not a struggle, but if you're not actually making progress, what you're doing, change what you're doing. Mm-hmm. If it's not actually helping, and uh, and I don't think Christianity works for anybody if you're not real. I just don't think it does. So, um, but that's what I do. Just go to the Bible. Look, guys, I read five chapters of the Bible every single day. Every single night. Right now I'm reading through a study Bible. You have actually seen it. It's the Bible that I chose where the vision of being real came. Mm -hmm. You've actually Mm -hmm. said it. I'm reading back through this. I've had this Bible for 20 years. So I'm looking at my notes from when I was a kid, you know, Mm -hmm. when I was 20 years old, just just starting out. Some of the stuff I wrote was really dumb. (laughs) And and I'm I'm just reading through this. But you know, one of the things I read through is I actually, I think it's really really important when you read the Bible to get a study Bible and to read about the book before you read it. Mm -hmm. Um, Man, you know, so many of these people that sound so wise, they're not wise. They just read. Mm-hmm. That's all. Yeah. That's what people are like, oh, Pastor Matt, you're so wise. No, I just read. Mm-hmm. I just read. And I read the Bible every day. I mean, I miss a day every now and then, but that is that is not the norm. Um, and and it just what, here's what, one of the things I want to challenge you guys. If you want to be wise, you must learn to be faithful. And so I am faithful to my church, to my God, to my wife, to the gym, to my Bible, to my finances, because faithfulness is not, I want to do a series you see on the board called Mystic Pizza. Mm. Like we have this idea that we can be good in slices and have missing pieces. <laughs> and and that that's just not true. Mm. 
Like mm-hmm. it's just not true. Um, virtue, you can't be virtuous in one slice and and missing another. It, yeah. you, you have to have them all or you don't have any of them. And that's one of the things that we've lost in our culture is we believe if I'm good in one area, I'm good in every area. And mm-hmm. man, virtue is a whole, it's a whole piece of pizza. It's mm-hmm. not one slice or the other. And we have to, you know, it's what the rich man who came to Jesus and he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said, one thing you lack. You're missing one piece. Go and sell all that you have and come and follow me. Mm -hmm. And the man left depressed because he was rich. Mm -hmm. What did Jesus do? And what was the virtuous slice? Generosity and charity. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, all of the ancient scholars and philosophers and Christians for 2000 years have been talking about this. And I bet most of our listeners never had one class in high school on virtue. Not one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you take wisdom, 1900 years of wisdom, yeah. and they've completely divorced it from, you know, it's, it's, it's like uh, at Harvard University that, you know, in this class on ethics, one of the young men was trying to pay a poor girl in the ethics class to have sex with her so that uh, she could afford to stay at Harvard. In ethics class, <laughs> That's unethical, right? Right, and and she wrote an article about it, and she's just like, I am surrounded by rich, snobbery, brilliant idiots that have no virtue. Hmm. Mm-hmm. They have no virtue, and um, you know, um, you know, just how how to respect and love and care for people, and and we've just lost so much of that because we focused on one or two pieces of the pie, and we've negated the others. And um, you cannot be a moral person if you're sexually immoral. You can't do it. You can't have this gaping wound in your faith. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you have to deal with those issues. And, and that's the problem is, right? None of, us, none of us are perfect, which is why it drives me crazy that we don't rush to worship on the weekends. We mm-hmm. should all be pounding down the doors. If we, were, if we were real, we would be pounding down the doors to get in there and to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who forgave us. Mm-hmm. Because if you if you just try at Christianity, you're gonna understand you can't do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But most people aren't trying, which is why they think they can do it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's real easy to fool yourself when you're not. You know, it's like it's like people tell me all the time, oh yeah, I could do an Iron Man. You know why they say that? Because they never they tried. They never tried. Yeah. They never tried. Oh yeah. When I was younger, I could swim all day. It's like no, no. No. I cannot do your body is not designed. Your body is designed to exercise for two hours. You know what I could do? I could carbo load for an Iron Man. I could do that one. (laughs) You are handled. You are gifted. Handled. You are gifted. Get that spaghetti over here. Yeah. Pastor Matt's got a big day tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah, that was a long rant, but again, I want to do a series. I think I'm going to call it mystic pizza, but it's this idea that I can be missing a slice and still live life. And it's just like, man, if you're dishonest in one area, you're going to be dishonest in another. If you're lazy in one area, you're going to be lazy everywhere. And uh, ethics matter. Ethics matter. Like if you don't, if you if you don't work at work, you're not working at life. Mm. It's just it just bleeds. It yeah. just bleeds. Um, if you're not good to your kids, you're not good to your friends. If you're not good to your friends, you're probably not good to your kids. I mean, it just right mm-hmm. relational ineptness affects all relationships. It just does. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it just does. I mean, if you're a racist, you're probably an idiot when it comes to relationships, I, I, right? Because devaluing somebody because of the color of their skin is going to skew life. Mm-hmm. It's going to mess you up. It means you're judgmental and overly critical mm-hmm. and negative and immoral. It, it, it's, it's a disaster. So anyways, wow, got on a little rant no, there. No, it's but, good uh, stuff. It's going to be a good series. Before we get out of here, we got one more off-topic what? question we want to hit you up with. Get your thoughts on this one from Crystal. That's right. Crystal says, I'm in a spiritually mismatched marriage. I'm a follower of Jesus and my husband is not. He says it's mainly because his parents are very Christian. His father's a pastor and he feels he's seen how fake and hypocritical the church is. While he says he is grateful I take our boys to youth group and have them involved in church, he doesn't want anything to do with it. I pray all the time that he will lead our home. And I've been with him for 14 years and have never had him go to church with me or pray with me. It's so heartbreaking. What can I do aside from pray and try to lead by example? Yeah, man, Crystal, my heart goes out to you. And I hope I hope that every single gal on our debrief listeners is listening. This is the heartache of a spiritual mismatch. Mm-hmm. It just is. This guy could be a great guy. He could be a great father, um, you know, but this is a real, real issue. It's a real challenge. Um, 
I don't want to say a great father or a great husband. He could be, he could be good. Mm-hmm. Um, because again, back to Mystic Pizza, he's missing a slice and it's mm-hmm. hurting the family mm-hmm. because guess what kids need today? They need spiritual leadership. They need someone leading in the home. So having said that, Crystal, um, you, your boys do have a father who's in heaven. They do have pastors at this church. And I think you need to let them be them. Um, again, the best thing other than praying and what was the other thing? She's leading like, by example. Leading by example is just loving him, loving him for who he is. Um, you know, that's how God loves him. God loves him for who he is, but he doesn't want to change who he is. Unfortunately, he's had a negative experience in the church, which, um, you know, I went through that. So um, I, I got abused by a, a pastor in church when I was 19 years old, uh, not sexually, but violently. This guy was insane. And I left the church for two years because of a bad experience. And I'll never forget, uh, I've told this story many, many times. I had a UPS guy, delivery guy come to my door, was a total jerk. You know, what can Brown do for you, right? Mm-hmm. It, he was, I don't, I don't know if he's having a bad day. I don't know what the deal was, but it, it was awful. And I'll never forget. He said, do you want the, I can't say what he said. You want this package or not? And I said, of course I want the package, it's mine. And I heard God speak, right? Wisdom cries out in the streets. Mm-hmm. And God said, why are you rejecting me because of an angry delivery person? Hmm. Hmm. And so here's, here's, here's what shows a lack of wisdom. Her husband is judging all of Christianity, 2 billion people based upon his experience. Mm-hmm. And that's tragic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why a lot of people are racist. People are racist because of their experience. And man, that is, that is a dumb way to live. It's okay. a dumb way to live, to judge a religion of 2 million people because of your few encounters with your dad, who maybe isn't even a Christian. Maybe he needed a job and he likes telling people what to do, oh, right? That's, that's, a, that's a great place. Paul says this in Acts, after I leave, wolves from among your own flock will come up and devour you. Yep. Okay, listen, there's a lot of unhealthy churches out there. We work really, really hard at Sandals at being healthy and happy. And we try to discipline and kick wolves' butts in our church. Mm-hmm. We try to do this without being, you know, uh, overly controlling or cultic. I mean, right. because, right. And, and that's, you know, that's how these cultic like qualities spring up because one or two people did this thing. So we have to develop all these rules and regulations when mm-hmm. the issue is the heart. Um, and so many times Christians argue about structure when, when the issue is not structure, it's sin. And so, so I'm sorry that your husband had a bad experience, but it may just mean his dad was a bad guy. It doesn't mean Jesus is. And so we have to do that. And we have to remember it was religious leaders who killed Jesus, who crucified Jesus. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, my hope is, is that, you know, I, I grew up in church and, and I had a great experience. So, so that's the problem with living life based upon your experience. So I had a great experience in church. Does that mean that Christianity is true? No. Right. Mm, Any more than it, than it means Golly. it's yeah, false, yeah, yeah. right? So mm-hmm. yep. And so you can't judge. And here's what's wrong with all modern spirituality is it emanates from the self. Mm-hmm. And if your spirituality emanates from you, who's God? It isn't God. It's you. Yeah right? So spirituality has to emanate from God. And so the question we ask is, how does God reach us in our hard hearts in a sinful world with sinful people? Well, here's the answer. He became a human. He came to us. It's not that we go to him. We don't connect with God. People say, I connect with God in my own way. Well, good luck with that. That's like, that's like saying I dial Mars in my own way. Mm. You're weird, dude. Like there's something off with you. You can't yeah, call a, into space a, in your own sweet, way. I got a sweet antenna hooked up on the back of my garage. Right. What if somebody told you this? Yeah, I, I go to the moon. Oh, you're an astronaut? No, I have my own shuttle. I, no, right. I go telepathically. Ooh. Okay, that's what a spiritual person is saying. I connect with the immortal, eternal, one true God all by myself. He, dude, that's weird. The one true, immortal, eternal, all powerful God connects with me. He does that. He connects with me through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the connection. Yeah. And without him, actually, here's what's terrifying. The Bible says you're connecting to other things mm-hmm. that are dark and demonic. And um, it may be spiritual, but it ain't good. So, Well, there you go. That is episode 74 in all of its goodness. That's right. We'll have show notes for this episode at debrief.show slash 74. We'll include links to some of the resources we talked about here. I'm going to pick Pastor Matt Sprano what some good 
study Bibles are. We'll throw some links to those in the show notes so that you can find those. You can also follow us at Debrief Show on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can send us questions on Facebook. You can share what we're doing on Instagram. You can tweet what you like on Twitter. There are options that abound for you. Just follow us at debrief.show and we'll give you all the resources you Boom. Any way you want to leave some positive feedback or five-star reviews, we'll take them. Yeah, Put them wherever you want. And seriously, we love it and are so grateful for those of you guys who support Sandals Church and the Debrief Podcast. If you want to be a part of what God is doing here at Sandals Church, man, especially those of you guys who are not plugged in and already giving or whatever at Sandals. We appreciate it when you make donations to help support what we're doing here. Uh, And uh, you can continue doing that just by texting give debrief. That's give debrief, two separate words to 951-900-4120. That's that's it. We we love it. All right. Good stuff, everyone. Yeah. Can you stick around for a sec, Pastor Matt? I want to tell you something, but I don't want you to do anything about it. (laughs) Yeah, you're fired. Throw up. (laughs)